Welcome to Mastermind Gameplay, where we break the mold for being square. Today, we're going to check out how to use squares and triangles in order to make a sphere. They might not be perfect spheres, but it's going to be as close as you could probably get in this kind of setting. This is our basic outline of that sphere that we're going to make. I purposely created it with just the lines so you can see how the general structure is. And this is more of a finished product using small grid blocks. This is a much larger version using large grid glass panes. And I built a tunnel and tower inside of it. Kind of gives you the general idea of what you could use it for. Maybe a station, maybe a base, maybe an addition to a base. Or, if you're creative enough, Maybe you can turn it into a ship. They're all built on a very standard large grid rotor using this format of a circle. This circle I designed very quickly off of Microsoft Paint and use it for pretty much every single sphere I build, simply because it is a very basic design, doesn't use that many blocks to construct, and it is fairly simple to understand if you make a mistake with it. We're going to build a standoff at the exact same level as the other spheres, so I can show you step by step how we create this. First, I place the rotor. Then I'm going to detach the top head. We want to add a small head to this instead. I'm going to add a little controller here. We can access the terminal. On the rotor itself, I'm going to select rotor lock before we add the small head. Then add the small head and then extend the rotor displacement to 11 centimeters. This isn't necessarily required, but it does assist later on if you want to detach this and attach something else. I'm gonna start with the squared glass frames. I'm doing two outward from the top part of the small block. If you do it from the bottom of the small steel block, it does make it more difficult in order to move the sphere itself afterwards. After the sides. I tried originally a couple of times to put one of these one by one sloped blocks, but it didn't seem to work out. Couldn't figure out how to connect it initially. But then I realized it needs an edge to connect to. So all we have to do is connect a vertical square block first, like so. And then we're going to go ahead and try to throw on the angled slope. And as you can see, it directly connects. I'm going to have four of these on the bottom, and they're primarily going to hold up the entire structure. I'm going to show you also how to build this up one block at a time. And then after that, I'm going to basically fast forward or skip doing the other sections because it does take quite a while to put all the blocks down. Now, as you can see, I had to add another vertical block to add a horizontal block to the top of the slope block. And I'm going to have to do the same thing here because I'm adding two slopes in a row. Don't worry, later on you can actually remove most of these vertical glass panes if you need to. However, the lower ones you're going to want to keep there because otherwise it may all fall apart. At least it did on me earlier. And the same thing here. I had to add two vertical square glass panes in order to add another slope pane behind it. Of course, Again, you can remove them later. We're going to go up five blocks. 
This will also incorporate the center portion of the sphere. Then we just need one slope block. I have a habit of calling these blocks, but really they're just a glass pane window. Now see, you can't directly connect this to go vertical again, so we'll have to put one horizontal first and then vertical. As you're building, depending on which direction you're headed, the lower angular blocks need vertical square blocks to attach to, and the upper ones are gonna need horizontal blocks to connect to just because the angle in which the slope blocks need to connect. Again, we have two slope blocks in a row, and then we're gonna have one horizontal, but we need one spaced horizontal on this one, and then we add a slope. So as you can see, you have horizontal ones on top and vertical ones on the bottom, which are your connectors. Then when you get to the very top one here, we're going to go five again. That should do it. And that is your general setup for one side. Kind of looks like a C. So I'll start on this other side, but I think I'm going to skip through it at some point. And here we are at the very bottom of the side one. So you can see now it's pretty much a circle or a pixelated circle as what you would see on Microsoft Paint, just like the image I showed earlier. Just need to do these other two sides. There we go. Last piece. And now we have all four supports installed. Next, we want to create this central band that goes around them. So from the middle block out of the five side blocks, we're gonna extend out two, just like we did on the top and the bottom sections. Then one slope. It's basically following the same exact pattern that the sides have. Instead of vertical, we're simply going horizontal. And there you have it, that is one full complete quarter of this. Now let's go ahead and do the rest of it and I'll start showing you how we turn this more into a sphere by adding more glass panes. And we've managed to go all the way around. It's starting to look more like a sphere. If you think about it, a sphere is basically, if you cut it apart, a two-dimensional circle with multiple planes. So we have a vertical and horizontal two-dimensional plane. Put together, it becomes a three-dimensional sphere. We're just filling this in. It is a complete five by five square glass pane. The top and the bottom are exactly the same. And once we're done with this, we're going to start filling in the side arms or the side structural supports. And you'll see that it really does start to take form as a sphere. Again, this might not be a perfect circle. It's kind of a pixelated one that you can get from 
counting pixel by pixel on some kind of image creating program such as Microsoft Paint, but it gives an illusion of being circular. I did try to use the curved glass blocks earlier, but it really didn't turn out that well. Of course, if you add four together, it automatically makes a sphere, but then again, if you do that, it's way too small to do anything with, and you can't attach it to anything. Now we're just filling in these sides, which will give you a better look of kind of cutting this sphere in. It's getting rid of just that two-dimensional look and creating the image of a sphere. For the most part, the entire build took about 45 minutes. But I have published a blueprint of this one, so you can easily go on and download it, use it on a projector, and simply build it as needed. This may be great for including on part of a ship, a station, having an observation point, whichever you may prefer. Of course, it doesn't all have to be made out of glass either. You could definitely make it out of steel blocks if desired. It's not quite as much of a geodesic dome style sphere though, because in order to make a geodesic dome style sphere, we would need hexagonal pieces along with triangle pieces. We have triangular pieces, but we don't have hexagonal that have at least five sides. For this, we're quite limited, but it is still possible to build. We're just doing the horizontal line now. You can see as we filled in the vertical lines that it definitely starts taking shape. It's kind of tricky trying to get some of these blocks to attach, but if you line it up just right, they'll snap into position. There we go. We just have these top corners and the bottom corners. This is where we had to get a little bit creative. For these, I'm using the triangular one by one glass panes, but I'm also using the inverted triangular one by one glass panes. See, this one needs to be inverted. Just switch it around here. There we go. While the other corners here are just regular. They're just the one by one triangular glass pane faces. And then the inverted are connected again. And on these inverted, we're going to add the one by one slopes. If you use one by two slopes, the angles definitely mess up and they won't match with the rest of the blocks. You can always try it out, but it doesn't seem to have that balance of spacing. The easy way I think of these, 
the inverted and the normal triangular facings is that the inverted ones always end up pointing downward where the standard ones always point upward from whichever direction you're facing. This is generally how they connect. Like these are your forward facing. And this is going to be an inverted triangular face. This part here, we're going to just add slopes again, but I need to connect these squares. I think I'm facing the wrong angle. Oh, there it is. Just rotate till you see the pain filling in the position. You may have to move around a little bit to get the right angle to connect it to the right piece. This one by one slope that we have in the side there is what holds on these square pieces. Yeah, we can't connect it to that other part. Hmm, not really feasible to go inside there. Well, might help if I put these other slope pieces on here first, and then we can try to do it. There, if I just reverse that, and there you go. It has to be facing towards the inner part of one of these slope pieces in order to connect properly. So for that, we're gonna try to do it on these side ones, just point towards the inner portion, rotate it until the painted glass is back at the top, and there we go. And finally, the last triangular face of this. And that is an entire complete corner of it. For the rest, I'm going to skip over and just continue on so you don't have to watch it. And for the most part, that is the entirety of the sphere. There are some interesting things you can do with these. Like I said before, you could make them a habitat, part of a small ship, part of a station as a decoration. You can make it a big disco ball if you really wanted to. In fact, maybe we should do that. Let me just cut out the top here and we'll go in and remove all these random attachment or connecting plates that we had to put in earlier, except for the bottom four. The bottom four we can leave in there because it may actually fall off. It did to me earlier. But for the other ones that are just kind of hanging out here and there, I'm going to go ahead and remove those. That should be the last one here. Looks pretty good. And just for the heck of it, I'm going to build these small blocks up in the center. This is not going to be on the blueprint itself. I'm just doing this for the heck of it so we can make a big disco ball. Or you may think of it as, a, say, a lighthouse beacon. Just can't put any extra blocks because I probably am too chubby inside of the spacesuit to get back out if I did. Once we filled it back in, I think we just need to put a battery here. Power these lights. They all turned on. Not very exquisite, though. Let's crank them up a bit. Ah, there we are. And definitely a disco ball at this point. Well, as always, I hope you enjoyed the video. 
and please leave your tips and tricks in the comment section. I appreciate it.